All right, ladies and gents, Ben Pakulski back here with my great friend, Kasim Hansen. Kasim is a functional medicine practitioner, clinical nutritionist, and all around brilliant dude. Um, I've brought him in today to ask as many questions as I can about uh, how you guys can make the most of your training and your performance uh, and get the body you want. And he's my go-to guy when it comes to, you know, hey man, how do I do this? Or how do I optimize this? Or how, does my, how do I make my sleep better, my performance better, my pump better? Uh, how do I detox? He's my guy. So, um, you know, there's, there's guys out there who maybe know muscle function really well. There's guys out there who maybe know uh, protein synthesis really well. Kasim knows it all. And he's my research guy. Um, so when I need something, he's my go-to guy. So we're going to teach you guys about alkalinity and why it's so important to stay alkaline and how to al stay alkaline. Um, three most important ways, three most important things you must do to stay alkaline. Uh, go. So the important thing about alkalinization is that everything in your body, everything it does, is dependent on the pH of your cells. And if, you're, if your cells can't buffer the acids that they produce and everything that you do metabolically produces acid, then their function and their efficiency decreases and their ability to take in nutrients and get rid of metabolites so shuts in, down. So insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity, getting fatty acids into the cell to burn, all of that stuff suffers if the pH is off. Interesting. So, um, any uh, thoughts or insights on people who say that you know, alkalinizing is useless because it's all buffered in your stomach? So what's going on in the stomach is completely different than what happens on the cellular level. Your stomach makes acid to digest food. That acid's neutralized in the intestine. All right? And then as you absorb that nutrients into the bloodstream, it actually is introduced in an alkaline form. So the floor in your gut and everything actually neutralizes those acids before they enter the bloodstream. And then on the opposite side, the cells are separate from the blood and they actually have to alkalize their metabolites before they can excrete it into the blood. So how can I get something past the stomach and make it actually, so if I'm taking like an alkaline food, like, like vegetables or a lemon, how is that actually getting past the stomach and allowing my, my tissues and my blood to alkalize? So it's the minerals and the nutrients in that that you're actually absorbing, and then you take that into the cell. So, the, it's, so if something like lemon juice, which is actually acidic, you're not taking that acid and using it in the blood. Right. Okay? You're taking the minerals that are in that, neutralizing the acid, taking the minerals, and then using those minerals to neutralize the acid Simple. in the cell. Right. Uh, awesome. So. Um, any uh, negative effects that anyone can see from maybe alkalizing too much? Have you ever seen that happen? Uh, and what performance uh, effects can people expect to see from being having an improved alkalinity? So, as far as going overboard, if you're training, it's, it's nearly impossible to get to get too alkaline because you're constantly making acid with training. Right. The harder you train, the more acidic yeah. you get. Now, there are times that you don't necessarily want to be extremely alkaline, such as pre-training, if you're going for a lactic acid stimulus and you want that growth hormone surge, right. which is somewhat acid dependent. In that case, you're better off alkalizing immediately post-training. Right. Kind of the same idea as taking antioxidants pre-workout. You know, people say, well, antioxidants are good for you, take them all the time. Actually, you don't want to take them before you work out. The suggestion being that you want that oxidative uh, response when you're training to improve the training effect. So, uh, similar idea, I guess. Is there any... Um, you know, massive performance benefits people may see from uh, alkalizing? The biggest thing is your lactate threshold will go up and your, your ability to burn off every fuel will go up. So your training performance and the amount of fat that you're able to burn drastically increase if you're more alkaline. Okay? If you become acidic, you actually start to burn more protein than you do the, 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 the other nutrients and you become less efficient. So you can, you can take your metabolism and it has two pathways. It can either make 32 ATP or two ATP. And if you're acidic, you keep going down that, that end where you can only get two ATP. Right. And so you become very inefficient and your training performance really suffers. Interesting. Great, I think that's about it. We're gonna wrap it up right there. Um, how, let's wrap it up with how often should people alkalize and uh, should they do it every day or should they do it a number of times a day? My personal opinion is in the morning and post-training should be the minimum, okay? If you haven't alkalized for a while, you might alkalize six times a day for a couple of weeks and you'll actually get a noticeable change in your performance and just in your energy your overall levels. energy level. feel better, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that's it. That's it. That's why you're going to need to alkalize. You heard it from the man, master, um, Kasim Hansen, Ben Pakulski. Posse out.